Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Martin with the Marcus Heart Valve Center here at Piedmont, Atlanta, and I'm thrilled to be joined by my colleague, Dr. Venkat Palsani. Venkat is a specialist in, uh, not only are you an excellent cardiologist, but a specialist in imaging the heart, and um, you do echo, you do MR and CT. And so one of the things I thought would be fun for us to talk about, we know that imaging plays a critical role in the management of valvular heart disease, and while echo is sort of the go-to technique, MR imaging is really spectacular. And I, I thought it'd be fun if you could show us two cases, just highlight the uh, expertise of this. This case is a patient who was referred to us who, for shortness of breath, and there was some suspicion the patient may have constrictive pericarditis, but the main evaluation was to assess the tricuspid valve in this patient. Okay. And if you see this images, Randy, here, these are the, the short axis images of the heart which we are getting from the valve level to the tip of the heart at the apex. Okay. And these slices are separated by about 10 millimeters. The good thing of doing this is that you're acquiring images uh, all through the heart and you can do true volumetric analysis. And by Simpson's criteria, you can do true Simpson's analysis of volumes of the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. And if you see in this case here, in this patient, the right side of the heart so that's all the right ventricle that you've got the arrow on. Yeah, it looks the, like it's twice, maybe two and a half times as big as the left ventricle. Yes, and uh, uh, that's demonstrated here. And the other thing you can see is you can get the long axis images of the ventricles, and okay. you can see this flow uh, here. So you've got the arrow in the right atrium, and then that jet that comes in is the TR jet coming in? It's a tricuspid valve uh, insufficiency. Cool. And you, this is the tricuspid valve, which is set lower than the mitral valve. Uh, towards more more it's towards more the, the apex, apex, apex right. and you see the moderator band on this side, and the you, this def technically we call it this dephasing of the protons that causes this signal here, and that's what you're seeing as tricuspid valve insufficiency or regurgitation. Dephasing of the protons. Dephasing. Dephasing of the protons. Dephasing okay. of the protons. I'll have to tell my surgical friends. <laughs> see what they say. Okay. And all right. As you go down here, th these are all the long axis image. This is a two chamber, and this is a three chamber of the heart. And the good thing about MR, there is we can, we can get infinite number of spatial uh, uh, planes to image the heart. And the spatial resolution is good, and the temporal resolution of the technique is very good. Because of that, you ca ac can actually image the right side of the heart directly. This is called an RV inflow view, where you can see the SVC, right atrium, right. and the right ventricle with the ba uh, trabeculation, oh, yeah, and the pulmonic valve. And you can see another view of the right, uh, right ventricular outflow tract with the pulmonic valve. You can see this jet here, which is causing, uh, caused by the pulmonic valve insufficiency. Okay. So, so, Vin, so uh, now you're going to show me where you can actually see the images, is that correct? Yes, Okay, yes. So, I mean see the valve, valve, so let's look at some of that. So you can see the high resolution images of the valve. This is well, the cool. aortic valve, which is tri-leaflet valve. So and it's you can a normal see aortic normal valve. Aortic valve. And you can see the tricuspid valve in a two-chamber view here, and you can see the flow here from the tricuspid valve Into insufficiency. Into that very dilated uh -huh. right atrium. And this is a high resolution image of the tricuspid valve showing the tricuspid valve insufficiency. This is the anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet, and the septal leaflet here. And then and you see the mitral very mitral nice valve. Much, Yes, the That's mitral cool. valve is seen nicely well in the same so plane. So you, you can look at this image, and I know you're going to show me in a second, but you can see there's early malcoaptation of the tricuspid valve. The, yes. The annulus is so dilated, the valve is just not, mm -hmm. not coapting. Yes. So since we have these two images here, we can actually go perpendicular to the flow and actually get the flow of this tricuspid valve insufficiency. And when we do that, these are called phase contrast images. This is a phase image of the phase contrast image showing this black area you're seeing. That's the area of the tricuspid valve insufficiency. And we can actually get a uh, ERO, effective regurgitant orifice area, measuring this area uh, of the tricuspid valve insufficiency. And that could be done just by me measuring this area just as a, I'm going to show you here roughly. See. Basically, you can draw it out and oh, that's say cool. that's the area. So, so you know, one of the one of the arguments about 
echo evaluation of TR is the lack of quantification thing. So you can so you can get the ERO, okay, and then you can give me regurgitant volumes and regurgitant fractions. Yes. So the good neat thing about MR is since you're doing true volumetric analysis here, you can draw. Uh, along the RV borders, your right ventricular borders, and get the true right ventricular volume. That would be your, and then you can basically, uh, you can get the volumes of the end diastolic volume right. and the end systolic volume, and the difference would be your stroke volume. Are you going to do that in, in more of an, uh, a long axis view than a short, or you do it in through multiple shorts, or how yeah, do you do it? We do it from basically the base of the heart to the apex. Uh, of the heart as we go through here. Okay, so you're and doing it coming up. That coming one. up okay. all the way down so that you actually get the true volume analysis. And what we do is we next do a 2D flow perpendicular to this pulmonic, uh, pulmonic artery. Right. And we get the PA flow. You know, technically speaking, the difference of the RV stroke volume and the PA flow should be your tricuspid valve insufficiency. And that's the method currently used in MR Good. to calculate the tri tricuspid valve insufficiency. So you can, you're giving me um, excellent anatomy mm. and you're, you're showing me the, the defect in the flow and then you can quantitate that. So it's really a, a phenomenal, um, phenomenal technique. What's the accuracy? The accuracy. What's it compared to? You know? <laughs> it is the gold standard right now for volumetric analysis because you're actually doing a true Simpsons, as I said, of the volume analysis. But what's it compared to? I mean, that's, that's the problem is that when you look at, at data in multiple studies, whether it's echoes or other thing, it's really hard to, I mean, because traditional cath is mm -hmm. not, not uh, you know, it's hard to get all the same de degree of data, isn't it? Yes, yes. So there's... I, unfortunately, the comparison for this form of analysis, you cannot compare it to the other modalities because comparisons yes. have been done to 3D echo and 2D echo, but the estimation of volumes by MR are always higher, so the correlation I, I, will not match up really well. So, but, but and I'm, I wasn't, sound, I didn't mean to sound like I was challenging. I'm just, you know, I mean, I, I know that it's spectacular data. It, uh, is there, are there pitfalls with the evaluation of regurgitant volumes yes, so and things like that with MR? So the big, biggest pitfalls probably are if your patient has arrhythmia okay. and we are scanning the patient with an arrhythmia, we may not be able to give you the same uh, numbers as we, we can do on this patient here. So, and if a patient cannot hold breath, that may have trouble. Okay. Uh, it, it's truly talking about its image quality. If we cannot get good sure, image quality, sure. we well, probably the, cannot interpret well, but, the best. Well, but this is spectacular data. I mean, I think there's no doubt that this is, uh, when I think, you know, compared to how it was maybe 10 years ago, this is absolutely dramatic. So, th so I'm comfortable with that. You have another really interesting patient to show us. So why don't you show me that? Yes, Randy. The second patient is an interesting patient we just scanned, actually. It's a patient, 24-year-old, uh, who was referred for evaluation of possible tetralogy of fallow. Okay. And as you can see in this patient here, again, we do the same thing. We do uh, the short axis image of the heart from the base of the heart, okay. slowly going up to the apex here. And we, then we do long axis images of the heart. And when I come to the long axis, you can see that the right side of the heart here is thickened. Much thicker. Yeah, much then thicker. The and in fact, you could see that nicely on that short axis view yeah. too. So even on the short axis view, you can see that the right side of the heart is really thicker. thick. Yeah. Really thick. It's thicker than the than the left, left side. side. Yeah. yeah. And since you get can get multiple images on the patient, you can do this RV inflow outflow view. Where you point out to the the viewers, you're looking at at the aorta and the pulmonary valve. Yeah. Is that correct? So we're looking at the superior vena cava here, coming into the right atrium, okay. tricuspid valve, okay. right ventricle, which is very thickened and the infundular portion of the right ventricular, which is the outflow tract, which is very, very thickened in patients with the tetralogy of fallow. And you can see the pulmonic valve here, which is thickened, and there is, you can see that dark area with a bright center, so that's because of the flow acceleration. Yeah, a little bitty jet going out the stenotic pulmonary valve, valve and that, and you've got some great short axis views. You of the valve. So in this patient, the neat thing is you can do high resolution images of the valves themselves. Ooh, look at the tricuspid and mitral, Those are, that's, that's fa fantastic. So you can see the tricuspid valve here and the mitral valve here, and you can see the high resolution image of the aortic valve here. You okay. can see the aortic valve is bicuspid with a raffe in the left cusp. 
And now you can actually do a very good high resolution image of the pulmonic valve. So the pulmonary valve was, al was also bicuspid or really stenotic in, the, in a bicuspid fashion? In the yeah, the pulmonic valve is basically bicuspid here and it's uh, stenotic. You can plenty, since we can scan to the tips of the valve, the plenimetered area in this patient was about 0.6 centimeters. And when we go and assess the severity of that flow, how severe is the stenosis, right. we can get a peak flow across this. In this patient, it was four and a half meters per second, which kind of correlates to so about- So it's comparable to the Doppler, Doppler. echo stuff. So he's yeah. got a significant, you know, yeah. 190, I mean, um, you know, a very high peak gradient. Peak across gradient there. across the uh, valve there. And when you, so for the tetralogy of fallow, you should have some overriding of the iota, mm -hmm. which can be demonstrated here. He doesn't have a true overriding of the iota, but what he has is a VSD right. communication. So he does have a pulmonic valve stenosis, and bicuspid pulmonic valve stenosis is c not uh, that uncommon in patients with tetralogy. Correct. And you see a VSD, you see RVH in this patient, uh, all the things that meet the criteria for a tetralogy. And this is a great planning tool for surgery. And what we are also do is do an angiogram on the patient at the same time okay. and we can basically demonstrate the arterial anatomy and the venous anatomy and the venous connections to the heart are the normal is the liver is in the right place uh, visceral situs cardiac situs are the veins draining into the right place that can be demonstrated and some patients with Just tetralogy right. tend to have uh, stenosis of their uh, left PA here, which is demonstrated really well you here. Come forward, yeah, you're getting close. Right, right there, there. Yeah, you, you can, can see, see so the that's, stenosis. That's uh, stenosis right after the origin of the PA. The yeah, right left PA. Left PA, and this is the main PA, which is normal here, and the right PA is pretty good too in this patient. So, so this this is really I mean phenomenal anatomic information and and functional information yes. uh, and hemodynamic information. So, d did the um, so with this information, then the surgeon knew exactly what he was going to do. Yes, Is that actually, I, we sat down together and looked at the images together this mo uh, this morning, and the surgery was planned based on these images because it actually gives them a lot of confidence going in what they're going to get into. Was he going to do anything with the uh, left pulmonary stenosis? I know he's going to replace the pulmonary valve um, and um, probably that area. So the question with the left pul pulmonary artery, they may do a patch angioplasty kind of thing to dilate it. So, I mean, this is, is phenomenal technology. And um, certainly MR is gonna play, and does play, but it will play in an increasing role in assessment of valvular heart disease. You know, you can look at structure and function and um, just incredible data. So, I'm, re I'm really excited about what you're doing, and thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much, okay, Randy, good. for having me. And we hope that you all have enjoyed this, and we'll come back to our website again. Thank you.